Good morning, everybody, and thank you for sticking around here for the second half of Daybreak to start your Friday. I'm Andy Curtis, and let's take another look at some of today's top stories. Park Lake is a very popular recreation spot just outside of Helena, but this fall, the lake's going to look a little different, but it's for a good reason. A pretty damn good reason, actually. The earthen dam at Park Lake is set for some TLC after increased water seepage was noticed during one of the dam's annual inspections. Welcome. If you are looking for a fun and freakish activity to bring the family to this October and support a good capital city organization, look no further than the Helena Avenue Theater located in the city's spooky sixth ward. If you dare. Every weekend for the rest of October, the Helena Avenue Theater is playing some of the most iconic public domain horror movie classics. It's that time of the year again, when we have to re-up our hunting and fishing licenses. But this time around, FWP is doing things a little different by giving us a digital option to stay legal and organized. Let's face it, bats get a pretty bad rap. And Montana Wild in Helena is trying to change that by showing us that these creatures of the night are actually creatures of great importance that love hanging around Montana as much as we do. When you see a Made in Montana sticker on an item, you know you're getting a unique piece of the treasure state. And here at High Country Snack Foods in Lincoln, they're not just selling Made in Montana products, but the entire Montana lifestyle to people all over the country. Montana, a big state with even bigger secrets. And one mystery that will likely remain unsolved is the disappearance of territorial governor Thomas Francis Marr. I'm standing here on McHugh Lane in Helena, actually right across the street from Bill Roberts Golf Course, where at about nine o'clock on Tuesday morning, the Helena Police Department, Fish, Wildlife and Parks, and even the Helena Fire Department all responded to a call of a very large male black bear being spotted in one of these trees behind a home in the McHugh Mobile Home Park. The bear was tranquilized, removed from the tree, and taken by Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. 38 degrees in Helena, so this is about on par with what the capital city has been seeing. This isn't, though. A big change here, some weather alerts across the state. This one's been in effect pretty much all week and will go until later this morning. Air stagnation warning up there, air stagnation advisory in the northwest part of the state. Just no air movement, no wind, so any pollutants from uh, car exhaust, for example, staying put. This one's new and a sign of things to come. Winter storm watch in southwestern Montana and up around Showdown. And this, we had a sneak preview of this yesterday, and here it is officially. Fire weather warning, wind will really be picking up. And with dry conditions, that could be a problem today. But we'll take a look at that in depth in the full forecast. The Montana DNRC is now accepting a second round of applications for grants to help implement the Montana Forest Action Plan. Now, the plan's overreaching goal is addressing forest health and wildfire risk across more than 23 million acres of forested lands here in the state of Montana. According to the plan, over 8 million acres of Montana forests are currently at a high or very high wildfire risk, and over 7 million acres have a high or moderate risk of insect or disease outbreak in the next 10 years. And I know South Dakota is an area of importance for about half of you watching me right now. Brookings is under a winter storm warning until three o'clock this afternoon. So if you still are planning on driving down there to Brookings for the uh, Bobcats game tomorrow at two o'clock, you're going to, please be careful. I don't know how much time that you're gonna need to give yourself. I know it's about a 14 hour drive from Helena to Brookings on a good day, but blizzard warning, roads are closed. Just if you absolutely still have to leave, please use as much caution as possible because this is no joke. So let's localize those numbers just a little bit. And in Helena, 47.5% of students scored proficient or above in the math portion of 2019. That fell 13.5% in 2021, but also rebounded just over 4% in 2022. For English, 56% of students were considered proficient in 2019, and that fell 5% in 2021. 
and rebounded just over a percentage point in 2022. And as we begin the new school year, MTN senior political reporter Jonathan Ambarian takes a look at what help is available to both parents and students trying to improve these test scores. Brutally cold, seriously cold, dangerously cold conditions all across the state are sticking around, but it will change Friday and change quickly. Now, this goes without saying, but saying things is my job. So here we go, wind chill advisories and warnings all across the state right now. And still, this is probably gonna taper off as we head throughout this afternoon, but we got that winter storm warning because of that snow that rolled through, specifically in the Helena area, we got a few inches down in the valley. We're joined now by Governor Greg Gianforte, fresh off his second State of the State address. Good morning, Governor. Thank you for making some time for us today. Andy, it's good to be with you. Now, I know you're a very busy man, so I don't want to waste a lot of your time. We'll jump right into it. One of the topics that you touched on specifically last night was asking for immediate tax rebates. Now, do you think this is something that the legislative leaders will get behind? And if so, what would you like to see done past those rebates? Well, first, Andy, I just want to say serving as uh, Montana's 25th governor is really the greatest honor of my life, and it's really a privilege uh, to serve the people of Montana. But you're right, Montanans have overpaid their taxes. Uh, unemployment right now is at an all-time low, but you started your speech last night saying, unfortunately, our main export at the moment is people. So what are you planning on doing to bring people back in the state, have people who are in the state start working, you know, especially when we're dealing with you know, very high housing costs, childcare issues, and uh, an aging population? Yeah, we talked about all these issues last night. Uh, particularly, we put over $100 million into childcare to mm -hmm. stabilize that system. This month, the city of Helena opened applications for its affordable housing trust fund. The fund was created back in 2020 after a 2018 report identified affordable housing as a critical need for the area that has really only increased since the start of the pandemic. According to the Bureau of Business and Economic Research, the median price of a single family home has risen from about $190,000 in 2012 to about $380,000 in 2021, while rents have risen from $670 to $845, according to census data. And over that same time period, the median income for Helena area residents has risen by just $5,000. So Andy, we love seeing your stories, of course. Thank you. And now viewers, you'll be getting more Andy Curtis because you have a new show. Tell us about MTN That's Outdoors. right. We heard your calls. We got all your emails and phone calls that you want more of me. Well, here it is, MTN Outdoors. We take all of the best outdoor stories that we produce here at MTN and we will put them in one show. Welcome to MTN Outdoors. Sometimes I think we forget just how good we have it here in Montana. People come from all over the world to hunt our big game species. But if you're asking me, the one that's easiest to find is also the hardest to hunt with the bow and arrow. At first glance, the wide open spaces that span our state can look as empty as the surface of the moon. But for the lucky archery hunters who have an antelope tag, that couldn't be further from the truth. We all know that the weather here in Montana can change just like that. A very special spooktacular Halloween episode of MTN Outdoors. I'm your master of scaremonies, Andy Killer Curtis. <laughs> And we have a lot of things that go bump in the night here in Montana, but they're not all as scary as you think. So in tonight's episode, we'll take a look at this animal that's gotten a pretty bad reputation as a bloodsucker, when in fact, it actually helps out here in Montana quite a bit. We'll also see how this icon of Halloween is now being used to teach Montana school kids about agriculture. But first, oh no. It's happening! <laughs> Sorry about that. Where was I? Oh, yes, grizzly bears. They're the things of nightmares for backcountry hunters and campers. And this next story, well, it could have been ripped right from a Hollywood horror film. But as MTN's Howling Haley Monaco found out, this one does have a happy ending.
What are you doing here? I am once again your guide, Andy Curtis. And Helena, Montana is one heck of a town. We have everything here. Interesting historical landmarks like the Guardian of the Gulch Fire Tower. A great downtown with breweries, restaurants, and shops. And some delicious garbage. If you're a black bear, that is. Bear sightings here in the capital city have really increased this fall. So in this week's episode, we'll talk with wildlife experts about why they think that is and what you can do about it. Here's a bit of a hint. They're here for a free meal. Spring has certainly sprung and a lot of us are taking advantage of this nicer weather by getting out and enjoying the woods and mountains. But there is a group of us who aren't just there for the pretty scenery. We've got our eyes glued to the ground looking for these. Now we all know that we need to take bear spray with us when we're out hiking here in the mountains, but do you know how to actually use it? Luckily, the good people at Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks do. Well, that should just about do it for us here this week at MTN Outdoors, but before we go, I wanted to say thank you one more time to everyone who sent in a photo this week. We got a lot of great ones of all of you camping, hiking, hunting, fishing, just enjoying the great outdoors here in Montana. And after all, that's what this show is all about. So please keep them coming. Send them to my email address at andy.curtis at ktdh.com. And you could find yourself at the end of a future episode. So without further ado, bring the family into the room because it's time for this week's MTN Outdoors Brag Board. First photos of this week come to us from D. And the sights and from the looks of that bugle, eventual sounds of an archery elk season. Good luck this season, guys, and please send me a picture of that elk once you get him. Stephanie wrote me in this email saying, no luck yet, just gadgets and scenery. And Stephanie, I find myself in the same situation this fall. Thanks for the pictures, please keep them coming. Up next, how about some nice big sky pictures from Keeley Ashby. Thanks a lot for these, Keeley. <laughs> and this might be my favorite one. Mary Cole sent in this photo of two future successful fishermen very cool picture, Mary. Thank you. And staying on the banks of the river, here is Maddox out fly fishing for the very first time with his grandma, Vicki Olson. Glad to see you passing on your love of the outdoors, Vicki, and thank you for the picture. That monofilament will cut the skin. It'll cut them down to the bone. There's a nest over there with, you know, the line is caught around a bird and the bird died. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of issues. You can say that again. Fishing line is understandably easy to lose track of, especially if you're fishing with a first-time angler like a child. But when some lost line does blow off the dock, it can really cause some havoc. We've got birds that use it to make nests and then they can get tangled in it. I'm sure everybody's seen, you know, the osprey nests with twine. Same kind of issue here with, uh, with the fishing line for different things. You'll, you'll catch fish with line hooked in them. They can get infections. There's a lot of waterfowl almost every year. There's some waterfowl out here that we're, that people report, you know, we've got, I've got a goose foot that has embedded line in it that it's twine, you know, that it's embedded into it and grown around it. So all kinds of abscesses, things like that. Wildlife safety aside, that line is also screwing up basic park maintenance. A lot of times it ends up in the grass uh, or in the trees or in the bushes and not in their pockets or in one of these monofilament recycling bins. And when that happens, uh, it's a problem for not just us, uh, it costs us a lot of money in wheel bearings, replacing wheel bearings on our lawnmowers. It gets tangled up in the, uh, in the machinery we use to sweep the goose poop off the lawn. It gets tangled up in the lawnmower blades. And until next week, stay safe, and I'll see you out there. <laughs>